good morning good morning everyone come on in come on in Whew. oh this looks kind of bright here super bright and let the sun shine this morning good morning come on into the room it is seven o'clock good morning good morning Good morning. It is seven o'clock. Man, time went by fast this morning. Good morning, Lakeisha. Good morning, Miss Elder Will. Elder William Bentacourt. Come on into the room. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, Minister Leslie. God bless you. Yes, it's a good day today. It's a wonderful day. I don't know why I'm so bright today. I'm glowing. <laughs> Something with the lighting, I guess. I pray that you are blessed. Good morning, Rhonda and Cynthia and Jacqueline. Good morning, Mother Regina. Today is a good day. We want to get started. Just want a couple more people to come on in. As we are in the series right now for Word Warrior, don't forget tomorrow night is our game show at Majestic Life Church, so make sure you tune in for that. Uh, this morning, we're going to be talking about the timing of God and why it's important for reformation, reform. Some things have to be reformed, and reformation doesn't just happen in a nation or a city or a country, but it can happen in your personal self. You can reform your life. Life. You can reform your, your household. You can reform the way you think. Reformation can take place in your spirit. And so we talked last week about the reformation that took place in, in Chronicles in the word of God. How I many of the Old Testament gives us the heartbeat of God so that we understand the principles of God and that we can apply them to our life today. Do not throw out the Old Testament. The Old Testament is still the word of God. And we also, of course, brings it, bring it into application for the New Testament and for today, for our lives. And so Word Warrior is here so that we can just have 15 minutes of time together. As we finish this year strong, we are in the second half of the year. We will not get weary in well-doing, but we will confess the word. We will declare the word. We will speak the promises of God, and we will stand on the word of God. We will not let this world system, the Luciferians, to get into our head and to our mindset, but we will walk according to the will of God, the spirit of God, and we will walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. And so as we are talking about reformation this morning and the timing of God and the strategies of God, I just want to do a quick review because, uh, and from Tuesdays to Thursdays, it's a, it's a lot of time in between those times. But we came from 2 Chronicles 21, and Jehoshaphat was a great king. He died. Uh, his oldest son, Jehoram, becomes king. And he has six brothers. He kills his six brothers because he thinks they're competition. Uh, then we, he marries the daughter of Jezebel. Bad move right there. And uh, God sends Elijah to warn him. And he didn't heed the warning. He dies a terrible death. And now Athalia, who is Jezebel's daughter, is now on a rampage to kill all of God's priests. Anything that's connected to the lineage of David, she's wiping them out. Now, Jehoda is the high priest. And it's amazing because he had to have the timing of God for reformation. He had to wait six years before the baby Joash, who was hidden, by the way, by Jehoram's sister, and her name sounds like Jehoshaphat a little bit, so she still had the, 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 the godliness in her, and she hid Joash, who was of the lineage of David, and they waited until he became seven years old. So six years, things were going crazy. Six years, the prophets of Baal were ruling. Six years, the priests were being persecuted. Six years, the country was going to hell in a handbasket. But a lot, but uh, Jehoda, the high priest, have to wait on God. And so many of us do not wait on God. We see things that are going the way we want them to go, so we push it. We push it. And I find out that even some people, they're going to want to do what they want to do no matter what. 
You can give them reasons why, why they will be protected if they don't do it that way. And they're gonna do what they wanna do just because they want it, right? And so what you have to learn to do many times, just take your hands off and let them do what they wanna do. Uh, we see that God did that to the people of God when they wanted a king so bad. God says, but I'm your king. You don't need a king, I'm your king, right? But they wanted a king so badly and then they got, that's when they got Saul. They just let God be king, right? And we see that through scripture. God said, okay, uh, even in, in the scripture, we know that God took his hands off the church in many times because the people would not listen. He said, I'll give you, I'll give them over to themselves. And so sometimes you do have to allow people just to do what they want to do until they can come to the revelation for themselves they're stepping outside of the boundaries that will protect them and so we see this here he had to let it go for six years and this is why it's important to wait on the timing of God and so he had to get the courage to now move now that Joash is seven years old and we talked about that and he brought the kingdom together all the priests all the people of God together and they formed unity and they were able to get uh, the military in place and we saw he had them stationed in the house of God he had them stationed in the city and he had them stationed uh, in the community and so this is I mean the government this is how we have to be as the body of Christ. We are not meant to be in the four walls of the church only. The four walls of the church is just to be a place where you get your weapons, right? Where you get your drinks and you get filled up, you get hydrated. It's the place where you get in, in your incubator, where you get healed up to go back into the world, right? And so we are not meant to stay in the four walls of the church. And the pandemic shows you this. It is a place where you get the word, the house of God should not be discarded, but it should be a place where you get the word and you gather together, you assemble your yourselves together you get filled up by the corporate anointing and by the faith that we bring together in the synergy of the people of God and then you go back out into the workplace the government into the seven mountains that are there for us to, to take rule and reign over and that's exactly what uh, he had them do and at that point we saw uh, that he had to guard the anointing and he said but let no one enter the house of the Lord except the priest and the Levites who minister they may enter for they are holy. Some people wanted to grace the pulpit, grace a holy place, and they have not been processed. We see that every day now in, in Western society, just because you have charisma, just because you speak well, does not mean that you've been processed for certain things. And all of the people carefully observe the law of the Lord. And the Levites shall surround the young king and every man with his weapon in his hand. And whoever comes into the temple uh, is to be killed. You are to be with the king. We must guard the anointing in our lives. Anything that tries to come near this anointing, we must take it out. That, that is, this is how we reform ourselves. We do not let anything come into the eye gate, the ear gate, does not come into our spirit. We must guard the anointing. And then the weapon that they use, he says, moreover, Jehovah the priest delivered the captains of the hundred spears, the bucklers and the shields that had been King David's, which were in the house of God. Why, why don't we use the weapons that God has given us that have been proven over time? He is the ancient of days and those weapons are still proven. Uh, so many times we want to do it the world's way, but no, God says, do it my way. My way works. David's way worked, right? He, they used the weapons that David used. Oh yeah, there was some anointing on those weapons and there's anointing on the weapons of God for your life. And then, then in, in verse, uh, uh, verse 11, I mean, chapter 11, verse 12, they said, take no prisoners. And that's when we saw she, they took out Jezebel's daughter and she was gone. Now, what I want to focus on, then we're going to um, talk about the actual reform that was taking place, is the fact that Jehoda had no selfish ambition. Here is Jehoda, the high priest, taking care of everything for this child, uh, Joash, who was of the kingly lineage of David. But yet, he did it for God. He put things in place so that it will be according to the will of God. Now, most people would have got the big head. Most people who don't have the spirit of God, 
It's all about them. They have to grace the pulpit. They have to be seen. They have to be in, in the limelight. But Jehovah, he did it for the purpose of, of, of reformation of a whole city for the purpose of God, for the purpose of the temple of God, for the purpose of the will of God. And he took no glory in it. And we see that uh, it says um, in... He considered so so he took no he took no glory in it. And when he died, he is considered one of the five godly kings of Judah. And but the reign was Joash, but he received the same honor as a king. Can you hear me on that? He did not take any glory, but God gave it to him anyway. And he was able to sit as a king. And, and a priest, right? He was a high priest and a king. And he got the glory that a king would get because he took no glory for himself. People got to get that revelation. When you humble yourself, God will exalt you. Amen. And so what reforms did he take? What reforms did he do? Number one, the national covenant was renewed. We see that in, in, in uh, verse 16. Jehovah then made a covenant that he, the people, and the king would be the Lord's people. So when Athaliah was gone, when the wicked king was gone, Joash is in place and reform took place. And he declared that that nation would no longer serve false God. That nation would now serve the Lord. You have to reform your household and put your foot down and say, this house would no longer allow certain um, uh, worldly things in it. This house belongs to the Lord. The people in it, the children in it, the dog, the cat, the, the goldfish, all will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, come on, we will serve the Lord. And then the idolatry and worship of Baal was destroyed. In verse 17, and all the people went to the temple of Baal and tore it down. They smashed the altars and the idols and killed uh, Matan, the priest of Baal, in front of the altars. The temples became clean again. Uh, it wasn't filthy lucre. It wasn't about name and fame and lights. It wasn't about um, likes on social media. It wasn't about looking like the world so that they could get some props and some, some up so they can get on a, a secular album. No. They brought it to the place of holiness again, amen. And God was reigning supreme. And so number three, the worship of Jehovah was restored. Uh, verse 18 and 19, then Jehovah placed the oversight of the temple of the Lord in the hands of the Levites to whom David had made assignments in the temple to present the burnt offerings of the Lord to the Lord of, uh, as written in the law of Moses and rejoicing and singing as David had ordered. He stationed the gatekeepers in the gates of the Lord's temple so that no one was in any way unclean that might enter. I love that. David was a worshiper, right? So they put everything back in place and then they had people coming in and worshiping. And David had people dancing and worshiping 24 seven. He wanted to look like heaven, amen? And so then number four, the throne of Judah was established. We're talking about reformation. All this took place in the timing of God and the strategies of God. Then you saw the fruits of God in it. Joash was elevated to the lawful place of king. He took with him the commanders of the hundreds, the nobles, the rulers, the people, all the people of the Lord and brought the king down from the temple of the Lord. They went into the palace through the upper gates and seated the king on the royal throne and all the people of the land rejoiced and the city was calm because Athaliah had been slain with the sword. So the throne of Judah was now established yet again. Can I tell you, when you establish God in your house again, the people will rejoice. The, the, the land will rejoice when righteousness is ruling. It's just the way it is. And if you notice, when the king went up, the people went up. Uh, uh, when you have a, a false king, a false prophet, you understand it's all about them. When it's all about them, you know that it cannot stand. A false prophet, a false minister, a look, a false politician, 
<laughs> right? A, a, a false anything, it's about them. It's not about God. And so the focus is always on them and therefore nothing goes up but them. But when it's done God's way, then the kingdom can be established and everyone will rejoice. And we see again, uh, the last one, uh, when he was elevated, then we see people were set in office in the right place. And the important, most important element of defense against external forces was the fortified wall to the city. And that's what we know is called the gates. So the gates were in place, everything was established and the people rejoiced. Can I tell you when godly leadership is in place, the people will rejoice. And I just wanna encourage you right now that as we believe for reformation, even in the city, I always talk about Daniel, I talk about the three Hebrew boys who never compromised although they were in Babylon. They never compromised although they were in a secular arena, but yet God elevated them in the secular arena. The same way here, Jehovah the high priest never compromised and then he was elevated. We cannot compromise, but we must reform. We are not conformed to this world. We are transformed by the renewing of our mind and we can stay in our position and God will elevate you. I'm talking about, do you want a revolution? Woo, woo. <laughs> yes, we want a revolution. We want to be reformed so that we look like God. Our homes look like God. Our ministries look like God. Our city, our nation looks like God. Let's get in place and let's have the strategies of God in place. Father, I just thank you so much for each and every person that's here this morning. Father, I pray that you would touch them right where they are. I thank you for this 15 minutes that it will be anointed, that it will not leave their spirit, but even as they get off Facebook, that they will be consciously thinking about how to reform their lives so that it looks like you. Father, I ask that whatever they touch will prosper in the name of Jesus. We declare supernatural manifested healing in their bodies, that nothing will fester in their bodies, but they are cleansed from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. And we declare shalom over their body, shalom, peace over their finances, peace over their, their health, peace over their families. Today, we declare it in the name of Jesus. And we give you the glory and the honor and everybody know what to say. Amen. That means so be it. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Robbie and uh, Pastor Catherine. Good morning, Iris. It's so good to see you. Afe. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, Levan, Monica Johnson and Sherry. Good morning, Amor. Amen. Vanessa. Sandy and Monica, God bless you. So good to see you this morning. Uh, we will be back on Thursday. Uh, we may continue with Reformation or we may go into something different. But remember, this 15 minutes is just to set uh, you strong. So as we get to the end of the year, we are in place and ready to receive all the promises that God has for us. I pray you have a blessed day today. God bless you.